So, uh, welcome back. Thanks for being here. Um, we're going to take a few notes today, just a few, kind of wrapping up the sections that we're in. Uh, the section we're in, and we have circular motion stuff is the main topic that I want to cover today. I kind of hinted at it yesterday. We did one example, and I put one on your homework. I want to do more so that when you get to that homework problem today, you know exactly how to do it, and there's no question. Okay, because I know I just kind of threw you in the deep end yesterday. Today, and I said I was going to go through more today. That's kind of the goal. We have homework due tomorrow. So, whatever happens weather wise, we still have homework to do. So, I would say a strong word to the wise is just take stuff home in any case. So, just be prepared. I still want my assignment turned in. I know some of you have already submitted it to me. Great. Perfect. Thank you. So, um, so, um, what? Do we go online if you have a They would have to clearly warn us, I think. I haven't gotten anything in emails, so. Uh, I mean, we got an advance notice. I mean, we could, we could, but they haven't sent any emails, so I would assume this is just a normal day. Do we so. still have, like, built-in Sundays? They yeah. Already four. Four. They can't do it. And we haven't used any? Mm. We had five. We used some hours for, like, heat in August, and then we used that two hours before the Wednesday or something like that. That Wednesday of, like, winter break. So we used like one day out of the five we had built in. Yeah, we had three days. We were out early for heat. It was close to so. those days. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's go through a couple notes here. Um, okay, so angle measure and angles. This, the main topic here that I want to cover was just what, what we had to do in the homework. You had to convert angles. I'm only going to do maybe uh, or um, one or two examples of like each type. That's it. So I'm just going to do them right here on the slide. So if I told you that you had, uh, let's say, an angle of like 130 degrees, and I want to convert that to radians, because I know that's what we have to do for the circular motion stuff, that you have to convert angles into radians. So what you have to do is you have to take that angle, whatever it is, and you have to multiply by pi over 180, because again, um, that, I, that whole idea of, of uh, dimensional analysis where you change variables, um, th the reason why it's going to change to radians is because the degree symbols here on top and bottom cancel out diagonally. Um, now, when you write this down, when you write this down, um, you can write it as a fraction like this. You can leave it like that. That's an exact answer. I like the exact answer because it's kind of nice to see that so you're not rounding everything off. Uh, I'll show you shortcuts for simplifying this. Um, question though. I still don't get why we can't just take it divided by 57. Okay, uh, I, I agree. That'd be like if, you, if I asked just for decimals, I'd just do that too. That's, that's what I would do, right? We know one radian is 57 degrees. So you just divide by 57, it tells you how many radians you have. I agree. If I wanted decimals. But most of the problems we have in this textbook geometry, they want the exact answer in terms of pi. So we have to leave like the fraction involved. So this is the, the way to do that. Yeah, I agree, I agree with you. All right, uh, so on this one, if we're gonna simplify this thing, right? Uh, the quick way to simplify this fraction without a calculator, just chop off the zeros. When they have zeros top and bottom, you can just chop them off. So this, the exact answer is 13 pi over 18. That's the exact answer in radians. That's the angle, that's it. If you want to go decimals, you could have done what you know Evan was saying there, where you can just uh, you just divide you know 130 by 57, it tells you 57.29, and it tells you how many radians you have, but I'm taking you know the 13 times pi, divide by 18, and I'm getting 2.2689, blah, 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 blah. This is roughly how many radians you have. And again, radians is not actually a label. I know that seems weird. We don't actually say so many radians. You say 2.29, that's your angle. It's not degrees, it's just radians doesn't really have a label to it. Um, that's why when we go into circular motion, it doesn't affect your answer because radians isn't actually a label. So that's the, that's the weird thing when you go to like, when you really look at the dimensional analysis part of it. Okay, questions with how to convert. Now, I didn't do the other direction, right? If I gave you radians, you'd have to just take that fraction, that pi over 180, and flip it over. So um, so I'm not going to actually do an example of that, because this is the thing I need to do. I need this for today. Like, I need to convert all degrees into radians. That's the whole point of, like, circular motion. So this is, this is what we need. But again, if you're starting with radians, and you're going to go to degrees, the only difference is you just multiply by multiply by 180 over pi. 
Okay, whatever that number is. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, that's what you have to do in your homework. I think we had two of each. You had two where you had to convert from degrees to radians. You had two that you convert from radians to degrees, that type of thing. I don't know if I just said the same thing there. Um, but then you had one circular motion problem, I believe. And so that's the stuff I want to talk about today. Um, there was one you had to, you had to actually draw an angle to. You had to, like, draw, where is this thing going to land, right? Tell me which quadrant you land in. So just make sure of that. Question. Okay, so for, for that Google form worksheet that you have to write it, like, 13... Yeah, I, I preferably want like the fraction. If you're at the decimal, it's fine. I won't count it wrong. But I prefer like the exact answer, preferably from now on. Okay, question. You know, if, you know how you ask like what quadrant? Does it yeah, land? yeah. What if it lands in like two seven? Oh, okay. Yeah, this is good. That's something I want to talk about. So good. You've already you've already nailed what I want to talk about today. There is a couple vocab terms that I want to talk about with standard position. That's actually what I want to talk about. So really good, uh, really good segment or uh, segue into this new topic, right? The, the idea here is if you were to land in a certain quadrant, right, it's super easy, right? You land on the first, second, right? This is the first quadrant, this is second, this is third and fourth. And again, why they numbered them this way is because of angles, how you draw angles. No joke. When we draw angles in standard position, right, we draw the angle going this way and it opens up. That's why it lands in the first there. When you open up further, this is why they call this the second quadrant. It's the second one you'd land in when you open up the normal direction, when you're in standard. That's why they number them counterclockwise. Now, the question of questions. What happens if you don't land in the quadrant, right? You land between them, like at 270, right? So, what happens when you land, when you land here? So, I have my standard position going this direction and it spun all the way around and it landed here for 270 degrees, right? You're not in a quadrant, okay? You're in between them, right? You're on the line, you're on a major axis line. That is called, and it's not, they don't get real creative here, it is called a quadrantal angle. A quadrantal angle lands between quadrants. It's not in any specific quadrant. So if, if it asked the question like, hey, what quadrant did I land in with this angle? And it was 270, let's say. I would just say, I landed on the y-axis. That's what I would say. So you would actually name the axis you land on. So it's almost a trick question of sorts. But it is a type of angle. It's called quadrantal, and you name the axis. So in this case, I landed on the y-axis. I help you out? Oh uh, yeah. So let's just say, like, I already completed the homework. Yeah. It's fine. You're fine. You're fine. So. What if I got like a thousand homework for this one? A thousand? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about that, right? It's part of the same position. Yeah. So we're going around a long time, right? You, let's say you got a thousand degrees for some reason. Like one thousand seven hundred and ten. Okay. Let's, you yeah, you just subtract 360. So, okay, so let's let's talk about what Paige is talking about. So, if you have some super big angle, I'm gonna just make up a number kind of like yours, right? 1,500. I like my number. I know, but let's say you're just doing some really big number. Well, I I know that I'm going around more than once. I don't know how many times I'm going around, but I'm going around a lot. So what you do is you just subtract. 360 as many times as you can without going into negatives. Don't go into the negative territory. Just go as many times as you can until it turns out to be a nice number. Right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this so you can see this. So 1500, or you can do your 17, you know, 100 number, whatever that was. Subtract 360. So if I did that, uh, this first number ended up being when I do this, it ends up at 1140. I subtract 360 again from that. Because that was another full spin. I'm back to 780. I subtract 360 again. And I landed at 420. And I can do it again. And I landed at 60 degrees. Okay, make sense? So this is where I ended up. You just keep subtracting 360 until you're in the positives, not negatives. So what quadrant did I land in? The first, 60 degrees is in the first. So it was kind of like what I'm showing you here. I went, what, four full circles, I went four full spins, and then it ended up in the first. So then you would just say like, if it landed on that line, it landed on the y-axis. So yeah, so if it landed on like a major axis, just tell me which line, which one. What's called a quadrant? Quadrantal length. 
Yep. Okay, makes sense? That was a good question. Good questions for everybody. That was good ties in today. Okay. Um, now, the reason why we're allowed to do this, because I really haven't talked about this, we, I, I think I brought this topic up yesterday, how to subtract 360s, because uh, I think we did an angle of like, what did we do, 428 or something like weird, some weird number yesterday, um, where if you subtract 360 a bunch of times, um, what you're actually doing is doing coterminal angles. So it's landing on top of each other. So these are all coterminal. Uh, terminal is the the last line when you draw your angle, right? So I ended up in the you know the first quadrant. Coterminal is when you draw an angle. You can draw bigger and bigger angles, but they keep landing on the same location. They're coterminal, right? They're co-lining on the same line. Terminal is the line that you're landing on. So that's why 60, 420, 780, 1140, 1500. They're all the same angle, technically. You're landing in the same location. You're facing the same direction. All right. Questions with any of that so far? Okay, that was just to help you out. I think you had one that was kind of maybe bigger. All right. Last thing today. The circular motion problems. Um, I want to talk about... Uh, we did a Ferris wheel yesterday. I want to talk about a car tire today. So how, what would be the distance you'd travel on a car if you rotated the car tire, right? So here's the idea. Let's say, let's say that um, you have a 20 inch rim on your, t on your car, 20 inch you know, tire, and that's a, that's a radius on your tire. Now it's not a radial distance, that's different. Radial distance is different than the radius of your car tire. Um, radial distance goes from like, the edge of the rim to the other edge of the rim. It's almost the diameter of the rim. It's different. This is from the middle of the hubcap all the way to the edge of your tread. So 20 inches. Uh, most tires are, I think, a little bit uh, smaller than that. Um, so now, this would be maybe a truck tire or something. So 20 inch tire. And let's say that you are, that you're gonna rotate the car tire 15 times. So you're gonna go through 15 revolutions. So you're gonna go through 15 full revolutions of your car tire. You mark the tire on the ground, you rotated it. We can figure out the distance you traveled. And that's, that's a part of this arc length. So I'm gonna start with this one. This is the easy problem. This would be for anything that you're just gonna go in some circular motion, okay? So here's the formula we talked about yesterday. This is the formula you need to have written down somewhere. I don't know where you have it. S equals R theta. S stands for arc length. That's the distance you're traveling along a circular path. So it's the actual distance on the tread of your tire. Or if you were to roll it on the ground, how far do you go? The R is the radius of your tire or your wheel or whatever you're talking about. So we, yesterday we talked about a Ferris wheel, a really big Ferris wheel for you guys. And then my theta this theta here is my angle. Now, this is the part we were talking about yesterday. This has to be in radians. That's the whole point of why we did this, this unit. You have to convert it to radians so that you can actually use it. If it's in degrees, it doesn't count, right? Uh, I'll explain that concept, like why wouldn't it count? Why, would, why wouldn't it work? I'll, I'll show you a real life example. I'll do it on the marker board here in a second. So, all right. See, I haven't got any emails yet today, have I? Anybody who hasn't emailed me trying to get in? Oh. Okay. Okay, all right, we're going with it. Okay, all right, so let's plug in my numbers. So 15 revolutions. I need to convert this into to an angle. So 15 revolutions, I have to multiply by 360. A rev one revolution is 360 degrees. So if I multiply it by 15, I get a really big number. So 15 times 360, that is 5,400 degrees. That's a really big angle, right? Multiple spins. Uh, now, we have to convert this to radians. So what is my conversion? Pi over 80. Pi over 180. Now again, how we know that so quickly? It's the dimensional analysis, the degree symbols will cancel out diagonally. And that's the number I'm going to use. I'm going to use this right here. No joke. That's just what I'm going to type in my calculator here in a minute. And I'm going to use my, ra uh, my radius. So 
Let's plug these numbers into this formula and let's take a look. So S equals, my radius of my car tire is 20 inches. We're gonna multiply by the 5,400 degrees times pi divided by 180. So like there you could divide by 57. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, that's exactly right. So now, this right here is exactly why I was talking about earlier about di dimensional analysis for radians. Technically, radians does not have a label. You don't actually have to say, you know, three radians. It's just your angle is three, not three degrees. It's just we know it's in radians when you don't put a degree symbol on it. So that's why in dimensional analysis, when you actually multiply these numbers out, you actually get inches because radians isn't actually a real label. Because on dimensional analysis, all the labels have to stick around unless they cancel out diagonally. On radians, there is no label. So when I actually do the math here, 20 times 5,400 times pi divided by 180, or like what Evan was saying, just you know, do your quick conversion on angles, I'm getting 1,884.96 if I round it. What's my label though? Inches. I'm going inches because radians didn't have a label, and my only label in that whole entire problem then would have been this one right here. That's the beauty of having it. Now, if I divide by tw uh, what 12 inches in a foot, I'm traveling. So if I divide this by tw you don't have to do this by the way, but if I divided this number by if I divide this by 12, I'm getting 157 feet. So I travel 57 feet by just rotating my tires 15 times. That's like the length of this building from here down to the office, right? So pretty good, rotating 15 times. Now, here's why you don't use angles. I'm gonna try to give you the best uh, example that I can here. I don't know if I have my, I don't know if I have my numbers. Let's see, do I have? I have a circle anymore around here? I don't know if I do. I used to have a CD in here. I don't know if I have it anymore. All right. Uh, I don't know if I have a CD anymore. Maybe it's over here. Got a CD over here somewhere. Oh, I got rid of it. I threw it away. Unfortunate. All right. Um, anyway. Um, so the idea is if you were to take a circle and rotate it like a, I don't know, I'll just use it. Okay. Okay, so if you have you know some car tire and you're gonna rotate it and roll it on the ground, um, it will travel a distance, right? You can plot that out. So whatever it is, so I'm gonna use this. Uh, I'll use this little mark at the top just to help me out here. So it's starting here. I'm using this little crack at the very top of my little circle. And then as I rotate it, so as I rotate, right, I'll just keep rotating it. There's one revolution. There's a linear distance on the ground I can travel. That's what we're figuring out. That's what we just did there on that problem, right? We did so many, you know, inches, so many feet. That was one rotation of that really small wheel. It's a pretty big distance, right? What is that, over a foot maybe? And that was a very tiny wheel. Uh, as opposed to, you know, car tire, that's a bigger object. And when you roll it, you're traveling a really long distance. Right? So when your speedometer on your car says 55 miles per hour, in one hour, that's per hour, right? You're going 55 miles in one hour. That's what that's telling you. That's the whole point of that speedometer. It's telling you the distance you can travel. So, so the, the big thing is, like a lot of people don't understand, is like the car is pre-programmed to know how fast to spin the wheel, right? It's, it's not... You know, it doesn't care, you know, what, 55, you know, miles per hour. It doesn't care that. It just knows, okay, I need to rotate this thing, you know, a thousand times to get me to that distance. So it'll, it'll go, it'll figure out the rotation, the speed of it. So when people get in trouble in their cars is when they change their car tire size without reprogramming the ECU in your car. Because if you change from that tire and you go to something bigger, a larger tire, the car didn't know it. It's programmed to spin the wheel the certain amount of times to get you to that speed. That's all it knows. 
It's not thinking. It just goes, okay, this person wants 55 miles per hour because of the, uh, you know, the, the accelerator was pressed, you know, the, the throttle was pressed. So I need to rotate this tire this many times. So when you change to a bigger tire, you're going to go a longer distance because it's going to still rotate. So uh, let's see if I, here's, an, here's a good example. Yeah, bigger tire, faster you go. So I really can go like super duper fast, fast. Really, yeah. Really big tires. Yeah. Really, really big tires. As long as your your you know transmission, the axles can handle it, can handle the weight because it would be good way more technically. Um, if it can if it can rotate it, you will go really fast. Um, so, so let's say this it's a different size. Yeah, it's a different size. Okay. So this is a smaller tire, right? So. Okay. So we're here. My car is programmed to rotate this thing one time. You see, I went a further distance. Okay, I went a further distance and the car didn't know any better, right? It just was programmed, okay, I need to turn this wheel once to get me to that speed. Well, if I change the tire, I'm going further distance. That means more miles per hour. So you will be speeding in that, in that regards. That's just a, like a little like visual demonstration. Um, and that's what all this like circular motion stuff is. You know, speed and you know, tires and you know, circles. Um, they're all based on this formula. So um, like when on a, let's say a mountain bike, if you're into biking at all, or a road bike, maybe you're into ragbri or anything like that. When you change the gearings on your bike, you know, from you know, a certain gear to another gear, it's changing the chain to a different sprocket size so that when you pedal, you'll go faster or slower or it takes the tension off of your legs because of the way that it's programmed to spin the back wheel. Um, so that's, so the idea is that if you could have to, get, to go really fast on a bicycle, you know, same, this all goes the same. So here's my bicycle. I'm gonna try to draw this. It's gonna be a terrible bike. All right, here's my bicycle. Da, 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 da. There's my bike. All right, so here's, here's the handlebars. Here's the big wheel. Here's the big wheel. Here's your seat. All right, there you go. All right, uh, go with it. Um, so, so here's your little gear in the middle. So uh, it's a terrible bike, but um, the idea is that let's say this is where your feet are. This is the pedal where your feet go. The bigger this sprocket is, and the smaller the sprocket is in the back, the faster you'll go. Because the idea here is that there's a chain connecting them, right? So what happens is when you pedal, the chain is directly connected to your feet. So when you rotate it one time on your feet, it'll rotate this thing so many, you know, it'll rotate it once, obviously, if you rotate one time. But do you agree that this will travel, like this circle, if I were to roll this circle out, it'll travel a certain distance, right? If I were to roll that. One pedal, it rolls. It's going to turn this back sprocket the same distance. The same distance. It will match it. So, because the chain is directly connected to the back sprocket. So, whatever this distance is, let's say this is two feet. Right? One spin got me two feet, right? This back sprocket also has to spin so that it'll match two feet. Well, if the back sprocket's really tiny, and I need to rotate this and roll it on the ground so it makes two feet. What does that mean for this little sprocket in the back? Fast. It has to go fast, right? It has to spin a lot of times, right? Because maybe if I roll this back sprocket one time, it goes like two inches. Okay, I went two inches, one roll. Well, I need to get to two feet. So I have to roll it like six or seven times, you know, to get out to two feet so that it matches. That, and it's directly connected to the back wheel. So the back wheel will spin eight, nine times. That's why you're going a really fast speed because the back wheel's really big and it's spinning eight or nine times for one pedal. So that's the whole point. This is this whole idea of circular motion when you connect them with gearings and all that. Um, it changes speed. So if you really understand the, the mathematics involved, a bicycle is a really clever invention. Like it's really clever the way that it's designed. You know, there, there was different types of bicycles um, that were designed over the years. If you think back to those, uh, one of those really goofy looking ones, I forget what they're called, where you know the big wheel in the front and your seat was like way up here, you know. You remember back in the day when you see those really old fashioned bicycles? I don't know what they're called. 
Um, but that design has changed radically to our new road bikes. Our new road bikes can go like 100 mile an hour by just pedaling a few times. And like no joke, those, those street bikes are crazy fast because they have understand the gearing and ratios on the pedals so that you can go faster. It's not, it's not, it's not limited anymore. So, um, yeah, it's just what crazy thing when you th start to think about the mathematics involved. All right, sorry, enough explanations. Um, questions on any of the topics we covered today? Okay, we're done for the day, so.